I best mute this bad boy because that's going to come through like crazy. What? Hello. 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 We're live on YouTube, Mark. Um, evening all. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's Andy from AH Spoke, and I've just seen myself come up on that screen. Um, I hope you're all well. Uh, thank you all for jumping on to uh, watch the Stargate buildy thing. Um, that was cool. Enjoyed that. Sorry about the editing. Was a bit poor um, because of last week's internet connection. So uh, apologies. Um, however, did the best I could. Um, thank you to Mark, my wonderful earworm, Hello. Um, for helping me out this evening. I believe um, the Wayne of the Wood Turner will be joining us uh, when he can. So when he arrives, I will add him into the doodah. Until then, um, my good man Mark is um, Till then you're going stuck to be with flying me. solo. All right. So anyway, today's project, I am going to be carving Kang from uh, Simpsons. It's going to be a cool uh, little project, hopefully nice and easy, nice and quick and easy. Um, so what I will do is, is from Apple, Apple Wood, just so you know. Apple Wood. Um, what I will do is I'll flick the camera down. Um, I will get cracking. Today I'm using the Fortiflex, Fortiflex only. Um, so it will all be on that. It's going to be quite noisy. So as I say, I will be muting my bad self. Um, thank you ever so much, Mark. I will right. pop you backstage if that's all right, my good man. Bless you. <laughs> um, let's go that camera okay can you see okay yeah that's fine a bit um, there's a bit of an arm in the way something uh that's my spectacles don't worry oh, okay cool it's, uh, so i don't forget to put my goggles on safety first folks absolutely that's a good shot on it um, right, I shall mute myself okay. and I'll, get uh, started. I'll introduce the audience for you. Okay, so first in the uh, chat tonight was Ian in the shed. Well done. Well done for being first, being extremely early. Uh, then you've got Tommy Dunn, some fella called Maple Tree Studios. Not sure who he is. It's strange, I think. I think he's on the telly. Uh, then we've got uh, some other strange bloke called me. And then we've got Cornish Pixie. Hello, Lee. And Robert Dolman. That's it so far for the comments. But there's some lurkers in the background. Don't lurk. Say hello. Speak up and be seen. Yes, Dale, I think it was spectacles, nothing else. I'm pretty sure everybody that's in the chat has been in one of Andy's lives before. He mutes himself because although the Fortiflex is a awesome tool, 
It will make your ears bleed. For those of you who may not have seen The Simpsons, Kang is the Viking overlord, uh, not the Viking overlord, the alien overlord that invades Earth in one of the episodes. And it turns out that Kang is actually Maggie Simpson's real father. He's a bit of a octopus type alien. Tentacles. That's tentacles. Yeah, so you've got to be a real Simpsons fan to remember that little fact. As usual with all the lives, everybody, if anyone's got a question for Andy um, about the tools he's using or the material or the subject matter, if you could start your comment with the word question, please, so I don't miss it. And I'll relay it to Andy. That's right, Ian, it was one of the Halloween specials. Hello, Baz. Hello, uh, Larry L.C. Woodworks. Welcome along. Steve Coombs. Hello, Steve. Uh, Andy, Dale is asking, would you like some Braw Beard merch? Brought back from Scotland. That's from Dale. That's a thumbs up for that, Dale. Uh, Robert, the wood is apple.
Hello, Mike, Midnight Joker. Welcome along. Thank you for that fact. Didn't know that. Simon Rock is in. Hello, Simon. Thank you, Cornish Pixie. Woodworking 227 is in. Good afternoon, Woodworking. If you'd like to give your name, we could call you by your real name, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> if you wish to remain anonymous, just call yourself Steve. Everybody else does. Danny Gillespie's in. He's from upstate South Carolina. Welcome along. <laughs> okay, Louis, we won't tell anybody that your name's Louis. Yes, Ian, I have noticed that. Uh, there has been a exponential increase in the, the amount of ducks we have in the lives lately. That's right, Dale. I don't feel like there are any ducks watching me at the moment, but it is a constant worry. <laughs> See, you say one little thing in a live and everybody remembers it.
No, I didn't say ducks. I said dugs. D O U G S. Dugs. Douglases. You have to excuse my speech. It's hampered. Ah, Wayne's backstage. Good evening. Hello, Wayne. Thank you for answering the call, my dear. No man. problem. No problem. Thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we I'll, greatly I'll thank just, you. Um, good, good. Things going well. I'll, uh, I'll just say hello to everybody who has said hello to me. Hi, guys. That was easy. <laughs> That's simple. And Ian Mike as well. Said, Mike says, uh, make sure you let him out of the green room before he drinks the bar dry. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> glug, glug. I managed to catch some of you live at uh, lunchtime, Mark. Yeah, I saw you pop in. Lee said you popped in. I didn't. Uh, I told her that you were working, so uh, you probably wouldn't be able to say a lot. Thank you for that. I thought it went very well. It, yeah, it did. On the whole, the uh, the cup centres need a little bit of rethinking and remaking so I can finish the piece off properly but it's 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 taking good shape good Dale said, don't let him know I'm here. I don't know if he's talking about me or what. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I don't know you're here then, Dale. Nobody told us. He hasn't quite worked out this YouTube thing, has he? Nah. <laughs> Not very tech savvy, our deal. No. Uh, bit of a lot, I... <laughs> so Ian, did you spend a fortune today at Ashminster then? Oh, has he been to Axminster? <coughs> he has, he was at Axminster and Northfields today. That's fatal, especially after a private lesson with yourself and then going to yeah, Axminster. Yeah, I know. I know. So how broke are you now, then, Ian? <laughs> oh, you only spent £75. Pound. It's not too bad. I think his he's missus must have had him on a lead. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, Deal. Deal's got to shoot. Having a family meal. See you later, Dale. Take care.
<laughs> Ian said he told his wife he was going to help Alfred's for some new headlight bulbs, which he did. He just took the scenic route. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Or you tripped and fell and you accidentally fell into Axminster's. That's it. You were just walking past and the wind blew you in. He had to, he had to stop in at Axminster's car park to try and remember where Halifords was. Yeah. Yeah, that or somebody told him that Axminster sell headlight bulbs. So he thought he'd go in and see. <laughs> oh got new tools what did you get ian come on tool envy can't leave us hanging like that got oh, rich is in evening rich hello rich <laughs> she didn't even question that the 20 minute trip to Halford took nearly two hours <laughs> Ian believe me she will have made note of it though for future use so we got a new ball gouge a speed sizer and a couple of little kits to play with nice <laughs> Oh, if they got the speed sizers back in stock, that'd be good. Been after one we'll of those. Certainly have the same at the shop. It looks like they certainly have at the North Shield shop. Good. Have a little look later. Say hello to Jane. Everybody saying hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Oh, right. Hello. <laughs> yeah, that's you. <laughs> Bless her. <laughs> yeah. No, there's loads of people saying hello to you, Jane. Uh -huh. Hello, everybody. That's Jane saying hello to everybody back. In, in case you didn't hear her. Does, does she sing everything? Uh, yeah, she does. Oh, cool. Sing, sing everything. I, I would say sing. Yeah. Sing. Well, it was Mark that actually used the term sing. Oh, thank you, Mark. Oh, loosely. <laughs> I'm not going to tell her that. No, no, no. I'm not going to. I just said I wasn't going to tell you. Well, tell me anyway. Mark said he used the term loosely. Okay. That's one mark up to Mark. That's it. How many chances one do I get? Ten, you only you only get the one mark. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh well. That's it. You've had it. You've had it. That that was your chance. You've had it. <laughs> Try oh, Keith's in. Evening, Keith. No, it's uh, it's Jean without the white, Ian. Hello, Keith. Yeah, Steve, I'm always in trouble. It's just the depth of fairies. Ian's asking, do the dogs not join in with her singing? No, Ian, the tender run for the hills. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Oh, 
I think you're going to get a slap in a minute. Yo, that's not unusual. No, oh, Bob laughs as he's in. Afternoon, Bob. And Hello, Keith is in the you, Mark. Good demo earlier. Just got to catch up with the last half hour. Uh, Tesco turned up at the wrong time. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I've got to sort out the cup centers and then I'll be able to finish it properly. Cornish Pixie, have you done that housework yet? Fond of a treat this afternoon, aren't you, Mark? Hey. I see you're fond of a treat this afternoon. <laughs> no, she, she said that she was quite happy to come around and earworm for me here because it meant she didn't have to go home and do the housework. All right, okay. No. <laughs> Good girl. I'll tell you what I did forget to do, Wayne. And I did mean to do it, but it completely slipped my mind. I completely forgot to promote next weekend. Oh, so right, why don't okay. you take this opportunity? Fine, okay. Uh, the Richards just said something. Andy, can you um, give Rich a shout after you're finished? He's just asked you to do that in the chat. Take care, Simon. Right, uh, wait till I find, I'll see if I can find the link and I'll stick the link in. That's just the wrong order. I think Wayne has used up his, his one time. It's just a continual round of punishments now. He probably used his one time very early on in the relationship. Probably. I'd put the link in, but I'm not. I haven't got a spanner. There we are. That's the link. That's the link to the virt virtual craft weekend. Um, next weekend. Um, it's been organised by JP Jimmy Page and Carl Jacobson, and Deal set up the the website. Um, there's 16 makers. Uh, all going live next Saturday, which is the 22nd. It starts at 10 a.m. UK time. Um, let's see what the running order is. Just... just let you know what the running order is. So starting over here, um, 
at 10 o'clock, we've got Jamie, JP Woodwork, on for an, everybody's on for an hour. Then we've got Scott, the blue light turner on, then I'm on at 12 o'clock. At one o'clock, we've got Dale, who will be doing some school saw work. At uh, two o'clock, we've got Anarchus Costas, um, who is a Greek wood turner. Um, three to four, we've got Heidi Jacobs from Whitehall Pottery. Four to five, we've got Martin Sabin Smith. Uh, five to six, we've got Andy uh, doing some carving. Um, six to seven, we've got Cameron from Cammy's Garage. Uh, seven till eight, we've got um, Scott Grove, who is an absolutely amazing maker. Um, eight till nine, we've got Michael Early. Nine till ten, we've got uh, Daryl Jones from Dreadnought Workshop. Ten to eleven, we've got Braxton uh, Worthlin. Eleven till twelve, we've got Zach, and Zach will probably be doing some resin, I would imagine. Uh, twelve till one. We've got Bruce Jordan from Jordan Woodworks and finishing off 1 till 2 a.m. on the Sunday, we've got uh, Carl Jacobson um, probably doing some wood turning. So there's a bit of a mixture there. It's predominantly wood turners, but we have got Andy doing some carving, Deal doing some scroll work and Heidi doing some pottery. Huey's just joined. Hello, Huey. Hi, Shug. Shug. It's all on YouTube and it's all on the the makers' individual channels. So what will probably happen is that once Jamie starts it off, he'll tell you who's on next and what the channel is, and then it'll carry on like that throughout the day. I think each maker will link in their descriptions the maker of who follows them. Yeah. It's going to be a fabulous day. Well, I was going to say as well, it's not just a, a one-off day that this is happening. I think Jamie and Carl are trying to put on this, put this on monthly, and it is by invite only. So don't go getting in touch with Jamie and ask him to go on there, because he'll probably ignore you. So it is going to be done by invite. I think Jamie said they're going to try and get a variety of makers on each event. So it's not just going to be wood turning. They're going to try and spread it across all the different genres of arts and crafts and making that this, comp this community encompasses. No, Ian's just said he bought a Wolverine style jig from EB and he's been trying to set it up this afternoon, but he can't find the flaming bracket now. Ian, is that the bracket that goes on the workbench? Because if it is, I've got one you can have. If it's the green one that I'm thinking of. Yeah, Ian said that's the problem with putting things in safe places. Okay, Ian, do that. If it's the same one, I've got a spare arm 
and bracket, and I'll send them to you. So I missed the beginning, Mark. Uh, Sugar's asking what type of wood it is. It's apple. <clears throat>
that disc makes short work of that word, that word, doesn't it? It's excellent, that disc is. I'm going to make a, a jig for using the Dremel. So, you, you know, on the, that potpourri pot that I did the other, the other day? Yeah, yeah. So I can make sort of um, slits between the drill holes. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. I can't remember, but I think that um, Andy will probably tell us if I'm wrong, but I think that disc is diamond coated. Yeah, I've got a few of those. Uh, Lee, Andy's got a, he has got a background in the arts. He has got a, I think it's a BA, BA Honours in Fine Art. Uh, Tommy says it looks a little grabby though. No, it's not actually Tommy. It's um, it it hardly grabs at all when you're using it. Bear with me a sec, Wayne. I'm just having to write down an address. Yeah, no bother. Right, I'm back. Blimey. Uh, Andy. Ian is asking, will this be painted green once finished or are you going to leave it natural? That 
didn't help. <laughs> oh, he doesn't know yet. <coughs> so how was the shop today then wayne better than last uh, time yeah oh yeah well it was a different shop oh okay i've got i've got i've got stuff in two shops this one was in Capri. So it was, uh, oh, it wasn't bad. I think I had about 30 through. Good. Rob CP's in. Hello, Rob. Right, Bob's asking me a question. On the jig you used to drill the holes, did you have to use a bush or does the wood? The wood holds together. Uh, Bob, and the thing is, seeing as how it's wood, if you start making mistakes and widening the holes, you can just turn another one. Just rotate the, just rotate the, the post. Yeah, and it, it ro rotate through. it, or you can you can you can alter the height on it to uh, put it on you know a different center. So it's it's quite versatile. Rob saying hi, Mark. Great work with us for you. Thank you, Rob. So, oh, looks like Steve Coombs is off. See you, Steve. Cheers, Steve. Doing really well on time, Andy. 48 minutes so far. Looking good. It's really taking shape, isn't it? It is. So have you ever watched The Simpsons? No. Nope. <laughs> Never. So you have no idea who this character is? Absolutely none. Okay. <laughs> Far too complicated to try and explain it. No, I wouldn't bother, Mark. Google it. <laughs> Google is your friend.
Keith saying I'm not alone because he's got no idea either. Check that out, Wayne. All right. <clears throat> now, it's a program I never had any interest in. Your video, your videos, just yeah, freezing breaking. up a little bit. Yeah, it's freaking up a bit, Andy. Oh, let's quick change the camp. Oh, is that better? Yeah, yeah that's better. Yep. yep. Yeah. Cool. Sometimes I think the camera just gets a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Needs better. a bit of a reset. Happy days. Oh, mute. JP's in the house. Hello, JP. Good evening, JP. Oh, 
I bet he just said into his mic, how you doing? <laughs> He's just said it. <laughs> this is one of his many catchphrases. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're the only two we can repeat on here. Yeah. I certainly don't want to see any more of those photographs of Jaffa Page. No. I took a commission this morning for a 16 inch oak fruit bowl. Very nice. They're going to supply the oak. Oh, nice. So I'm looking forward to doing that. That'll probably be just on the limit of the extension for your tool post, won't it? 16 yeah. inch? Yeah, 16 about the full. Yeah. Full width I can go. Yes, Huey real inches. Not man inches. <coughs> any idea of this apart from apart from it being 16 inches are you any idea how deep the blank is that they want to supply uh well the lock that they've got i could have to mill it down the lock that they've got is uh four foot long and 28 inches in circumference. You mean diameter? Yeah, diameter, sorry, diameter. Um, it's going to take two of them to bring it round. So it'll be attack it with a chainsaw, mill it down to the size I can get on the lathe, and I get to keep the rest. Very good. It was cut down five years ago. It's been stored in their garage. Will it still be wet then? Still be wet, yeah. I did yeah, say it that, will. Right? Don't try and make it too deep. No, she doesn't want it uh, deep, deep. I was going to go sort of. Well, I was going to go. I was going to aim for a three-inch blank. Yeah, three, three, and half, three, three, three and a half, maybe four inch for a, a 16 inch fruit bowl. I was just thinking more about the, the your bearings on the lid. Yeah. Yeah, she wanted it um, 
sort of between a fruit bowl and a platter. Can I, oh. I said to her, because it's because it's going to be so wide, it doesn't want to be that deep. It wants no. to just flare out from the bottom, you know? So it'll be a dish then? Yeah, a dish. That was the word I was looking for. say anything in these lives without people taking it the wrong way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I'll be back in a second. I'm just going to get another beer. Okay, mate. Huey, you're an animal. And you, you too, Rob CP, don't encourage him. Don't you start chuckling either. <laughs> I've just seen what Jamie wrote. Yeah. Like I said in my live earlier, this community is so loving and supportive. <laughs> <laughs> With me, JP is probably vaping. I got a nice little surprise when I got to the shop this morning that sold a few pieces. That's good. Did you take in the piece you did yesterday? No, no, because I, I, I hadn't heard from anybody on how the sales had been going, so I didn't know if I'd um, sold anything or not, so I didn't bother taking anything through. But I'm back in the Kukubri shop on Tuesday. So I'll, I'll take some new stuff through on Tuesday. Good. Yeah, so I had a 130 quid waiting for us this morning. Nice. Could buy a new drill with that. <laughs> or another router. <laughs> 
Just this one, isn't it? Just to add, just to, just to, add to the collection. <laughs> just to add to the collection, yeah. Oh. You're right, Andy. <laughs> Yeah, JP saying, no, don't need a router. Well, I certainly don't need another one, JP, that's for certain. <laughs> what was that, mate? Sorry? I said, were you all right? You had a little slip then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed by a mile. Might have looked closer than what it was. <laughs> <clears throat> Coming together nicely. Well, I didn't feel it, let's put it that way. No sense, no feeling though. So, um, yeah, cool. I've just got to do his collar for like the main bulk removal. So obviously it needs to be round. Flatten it off because it's obviously still got the cut marks from the bandsaw. Um, and then start putting in the detail, the eye, the um, eyelids, uh, the wrinkles of the brow, and his mouth with the spit. Hmm. Yeah, doing well, mate. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, we're getting there. I'm do, I'm, do you know what? I'm no going to have a cuppa because I believe I'm going to go. We're in the big great guns. In. Hello, Wayne. Hello, hello, Wayne. Hello, Val. And Huey said, keep it in the box, Wayne. Uh, begin a collection like Glenn. Funnily enough, Shug, <laughs> I have got an Aldi I have got an Aldi Evening all. still in the box, which I bought, oh, I don't know, last year sometime, I think. Oh, is that the one that... So what's, the, what's going on in the chat, then? What's oh, lots of stuff. The they just basically ripped oh, the right. pee out of me, no as usual. Yeah, that happens a lot. Uh, they, were talking, they were talking about The Simpsons, because I've never okay. seen it. Um, mm -hmm. which I have to say that is a little bit weird seeing as it's no, like no, nearly I've never watched an episode Andy. and it's never watched an episode nearly every day ever <laughs> that's crazy man I'm going to force you to sit down and watch an episode gaffer tape no, into a chair <laughs> yeah I'll w wait until we're at Maker Central. I'll get one of those VR glasses and I'll stick them on his head. Oh, I can't get away! We'll, we'll keep supplying you with wine. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll supply the wine. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not heathens. If, if you want. Yeah, yeah. Goodness me, man. Goodness me. You can have a comfy chair as well. Oh, actually. Maybe, maybe a stool. <laughs> oh, just only a stool. Well, I don't know what Glenn's got, you see. Oh, I'm yeah, thinking yeah. the Yorkshire grits and we've used it. Uh, it will not have any stools there for me. They'll be expecting me to work all weekend. Yeah, ain't that the truth. I'm going to be bouncing from three of them by the sound of things. You and me at the end of the night will both be sat there on in the bar like half dead compared to <laughs> Before we've touched any alcohol. Yeah, before. Yeah. Oh. Mutey mute. Ian is asking you, Andy, if you work in uh, Make a Central as well. Yes, uh, Andy will be on the Dremel stand. And the GPS stand. And the GPS and stand, you. most likely. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, Andy, you don't need to mute yourself because that's not loud at all. No? No. Nope. Can barely hear it. Cool. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what the plan is. I, there might be that I end up doing 
uh, just the one stand. As GPS asked me originally, so uh, obviously I would go with them. Um, I would assume they're going to go again this year. Um, so I would assume that that deal still remains. However, Dremel have also offered me the same. So. JPC and Wayne will want to join the Stonecutters by the end of the episode. Well. <laughs> saying that he's just been looking at the map for Maker Central and it seems that they're beginning to fill up all the empty spaces which it's is good. good brilliant I must buy my ticket yes you must I must remember to do that I would do it sooner rather than later as well Mark are you? yeah I'll do it this week I'll see if Cornish Pixie wants to come along with me. <coughs> she can be my responsible adult for the day. <laughs> Who am I kidding? You got to stay for the weekend, mate. I was going to drive up, drive back. I, yeah. If you can, Mark, stay the whole weekend. You will see. thank me for it. You will thank me for it. Rob CP, don't you know what Maker Central is? Go on in, Wayne. You explain it. Maker Central. It is a... Um, it's makers from all over the world getting together for a weekend at the NEC in Birmingham uh, with lots and lots of... Um, Oh, trade, trade suppliers stores. there, trade stalls and everything there, things for kids to do, uh, things for adults to do, lots of famous uh, YouTubers there to, to meet up with and have a chat with, and an and, and absolutely brilliant time in the bar afterwards. Catching up with everyone, that was the best part, I think. Yeah, yeah, there was. It, it, it gives you a chance to meet um, everybody who you talk to in the chats uh, on YouTube. Um, it, it's, just, it's just an absolutely brilliant weekend. If it goes the way it usually does, um, the Makers International podcast usually gets held in the bar at the Hilton on the Sunday night. Oh, 
I usually, uh, well, I went Sunday lunchtime last time. Well, it's about four o'clock, I think. Yeah, Ian's just put in, they've got Robot Wars on uh, this next one that's coming up as well. I'm going to mute myself because I'm going to put the hardcore cutters on in a second. So, um, okay. I'll mute. Yep, no problem. Certainly, the Friday is going to be a hell of a long day because I've got to get down to Scarborough to help Glenn pack the van. You're going to be knackered. Yeah, it's either that or um, travel down to Scarborough on the Thursday. I don't think I'll be doing that, though. I think I'll just set off at the, the crack of Sparrow Fart, get down to Scarborough, get the van packed. Mind you, I don't even know when Glenn's picking the van up. Get the van packed, drive down, get set up, and then head to the hotel. Rob saying he's seen some adverts on Instagram and Facebook where they've taken clips from Andy and from Martin Saban Smith. I haven't seen any of them. Oh. That's just about right, Shug. Although it'll probably be cider. I am Mind a it. cider drinker. I've got to admit, with the prices at the Hilton, at the Hilton Bar, I did um, actually fill water bottles up with wine when I went last year. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, right. Rob saying one was for a rotary tool, and the clip they took from Martin was uh, for a pyrography kit. Oh, right. Okay. Well, there you go. You've got an offer of help. On the Friday, um, well, to tell you the, what I'm actually hoping again is that we will be up and running and away. Um, because I'll probably, the, like, like I say, I'm planning on setting up very early, so I'm planning on getting down to uh Glynn's around about eight o'clock at past eight. Hopefully, the van will be all sorted, we'll just need to pack it and get away.
because Glenn's already got the stand made. The stand's already built. It'll be the same stand as he had um, last year and the same stand as we used at um, Harrogate last year. Yeah, he's had second thoughts now. <laughs> if you're going to Snaytons, Ian, um, if you're going to Snaytons, just buy wood. If you're going to be buying anything else, wait till you get down to the show. Because there'll be, obviously, there'll be show discounts. Axminster are going to be there. Um, Turner's yeah, Retreat are, are yeah, going to be there. there. Uh, I'm not very sure, to tell you the truth. They may well be. I can't remember if they were there last year or not. Um, Wood Art will be there. They, they do a lot of the, the pyrography stuff and the, uh, the likes of the cutters that, that Andy's using um, and stuff like that. There's got, there's going to be loads of um, trade stands there, and they will all probably have uh, show discounts on. Yes, Ian, you need a pro edge in your life. Buy a pro edge. Well, it'll be Turner's Retreat that's selling them. So they, they will be there because uh, Turner's Retreat is part of Sorby. Yeah, Turner's Retreat, Wayne saying Turner's Retreat was there and Martin was on the end of the stall. Martin did say the other week that he won't be demonstrating at uh, Maker Central. He usually demonstrates on the, the Turner's Retreat stand. So I don't know what Martin's doing. Uh, I'm if, he, if he's if doing just... anything. I'm wondering if he said that with a view to knowing that his new business was going to be. Well, up there is that, but I mean, because he um, might he might be there with his new business. He may well be. He may well be. He'd be daft not to be, and he's not daft. So. I got to say that the Pro Edge was the best investment I've ever made. I used to sharpen on a on a grinder with a Wolverine style jig. Yes, and when, I, when I switched to the Pro Edge, it just changed everything completely. The only difference so, I did on my the only difference I did on my grinder was get a um, a pink wheel. Right. Because no, the, the less the, aggressive. I start the original stone wheels. But it just just changed everything. Just made you feel more confident. I think you get a better edge. It's more repeatable. So I think that's simple. The main, that's the main thing, the repeatability. <laughs> yeah. Same grind every time. <laughs> Sell a kidney in. <laughs> if you have any small children, consider selling them as well. Yeah, that's true, Wayne. Wayne Bigfoot says, with the Pro Edge, you also tend to sharpen more often because it's not such a chore, which is right, because if you feel like your tool needs sharpening, it's already too late. You've gone past the point where you should have already sharpened it. And with the Pro Edge, it's literally 30 seconds, if that. Oh, yeah, easily, easily. By the time you stop, I don't even turn the lathe off. I just turn around in the jig, turn it on, pass, pass, one continual pass, turn it off, Go. back on the lathe. Yeah.
yeah, you only need one kidney, Ian. Having two is just a luxury. <laughs> you could, I'm sure, you know, somebody in China will buy your kidney for you. And, God, that's a pro edge at least. I can't sell mine because they're damaged. <laughs> Definitely been used. So Wayne's just started using the ceramic belt. They are brilliant, aren't they, Wayne? Yeah, I've got the ceramic belts. I switched from the Trizac ones. I do like the idea of the diamond belt, but it's so expensive. I don't really see the point. But that's just a, a personal viewpoint. See, I never go any higher than 120. Well, it's... I worked out, if you buy the diamond belt, uh, I mean, I'm going from what Martin St. Smith says. He reckons his diamond belt would last him two to two and a half, maybe three years. Yeah. You'd have to use it for those three years before you're in profit against yeah. replacing the belts. So it's it's a close run thing. But it's just the initial outlay of 140 quid for a belt. Yeah. I mean, Jimmy Clues talked about um, a, a similar type of thing with CBN wheels and the ordinary grinding stones. Yeah. You know, you pay that much for a CBN wheel, which will... Yeah, 100, you know, sort of, 130, 140 quid for a yeah, CBN. Yeah, de depending on what quality of CBN wheel you get. And you pay, um, what, 30 quid for an ordinary grinding stone? Yeah, exactly. I mean... Which, which will last that. about... So one of them will last you about... Um, Three years? Two, three years. Yeah, two, three yeah. years. So that's going to be, um, if you multiply that by 10, there's 30 years. You're going to get yeah. out of grey stones as opposed to a CBN. Yeah. All right, CBNs have an advantage because they sharpen much cooler, so you don't get the sparks and you don't alter the molecular structure of the, the blade. But... If you're careful with a stone wheel, you know, if you don't press too hard and leave the edge on there for too long, you're not going to damage yeah. the blade. It's just you're it's about it just becomes about technique then, doesn't it? Yeah, you've got to get really hot to start damaging the blade anyway. Yeah, yeah. If your blade starts turning blue, you've no you've done something wrong. Unlike JP, if JP starts turning blue, you know he's being pretty normal. Yeah. <laughs> Does he hold his breath when he turns? <laughs> I do. I have to keep reminding myself to breathe every now and then. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah. Especially those last couple of passes on the bottom of a bowl. Breathe. <laughs> That's why I like the yarn balls I do because I have, I do those purposely quite thick at the bottom because it gives it adds weight so that when they're pulling the yarn out through the hole, the bowl doesn't move. Yeah. So I'm, I, you know, I'm happily confident doing those, but like doing that uh, thin bowl that you showed me how to do at Dale's. Uh huh. I wasn't breathing then. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. So Wayne is donating his grinder to Steve. Oh, that's nice.
So Wayne's just made Valerie depth gauge, get depth gauge, I should say, the same as Chris Fish's. So no more fun. Right. I must have, I must mute myself over then. Is that like the, the one I use? Yeah. The one that sits on the, um, the bars of the bed. Oh, no, no, no. I use a T-bar type. It's a, a length of wood with a hole drilled through the middle and a dowel through the middle. Yeah, but the, 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 way, the way that Chris does it... I know the one he, you mean. Yeah. yeah. The, the, okay. No, no, go explain it for the people in the chat. It's, it's a bit difficult to explain. It's like a flat base with an L shape and a bar running through it and the L shape goes up towards the headstock, doesn't it? Wait, you on, have, the way, you have, on the bedways. You have one piece of wood on the bed that goes to the end of your jaws. So yeah. you, if you go vertically down from your jaws, that's where that piece of wood stops. Then you have another piece of wood uh, that goes in the bedways this has a vertical uh, piece on with the dowel bar going through. And you push that up against the bottom of the um, the bottom of the inside of the bowl and look down and the space between the piece of wood at the headstock and on your um, depth gauge, that actually shows how much further you've got to go till you get to the bottom of the bowl. Yeah. Ian's just put in for any for anybody who is a member of Maker Central. Uh, Maker Central, I've got a website that you can go on, and you can become a member of Maker Central. Um, you, you you can get it free, I think, but you can pay a monthly sum as well. And I, I think, think if you pay three ninety five, yeah, if you pay a monthly a month, sum, yeah, if you pay a monthly sum, there's loads of suppliers out there that are giving discounts. And it looks like Glynn's just started as well. Yeah, there's two levels of membership. There's a free membership and the subscribed membership. Oh. And you get a newsletter and updates and discounts if you're a paid member. They also give you help if you're a YouTuber. If you're a member of Maker Central, they promote your videos for you as well. Yeah, because uh, Glenn said the other night that uh, Nick had been in touch with him. Nick Zimetti had been in touch with him about um, doing the membership thing. It's three pound fifty a month. You also get discounted tickets for the show.
Oh. Oh. That looks awesome. There we go. Uh, answer to the previous question, am I going to colour him? Yes, I am, I think. I think it requires it. Um, yeah, I think so. Part, partly because the sanding, awesome. um, it's a pain in the butt with uh, Apple because it burns quite quickly, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, especially with uh, Dremel. You'd have to hand sand that, wouldn't you? So I think... Yeah, I'm not going to put hands on that. No, that would be a pain. It's uh, it'll just get a coat of paint. I'll just try to get off the, the fuzzies. Burrs. Where's my lighter? Rich is back. Hello, Rich. Didn't know you'd left. Yeah, Hi, Rich. Was... Fire. Fire in the carving shed. Do, do, do. No, it's, it's, lit. it's not being lit long enough to be a fire risk. No, no, no. It wasn't for the fire risk. It was just... And he's using fire. Fire. Do do do. Yeah. Huey says, "Yep, Kang is going to conquer the world." <laughs> yes, I think he might well do. Oh, so fuzzy, Zebra. Go away, Fuzzy. Come on, let's get the paintbrush out. Let's get them painting. Right. Uh, let me just uh, clean this. And this is how we do it in the heel house. Yep. That's clean. So, Rich had to get, Rich had to get some bits from Tesco's. He's going kayaking tomorrow. Whatever you do, Andy, don't get a brush out and start brushing the dust away. Because that triggers Wayne. <laughs> I'm not allowed to dust anymore when I'm on camera with Wayne. I have to sit on my hands and look at the <laughs> dust. <laughs> Just look at it, Mark. Just look. Stop right. dusting, he goes. <laughs> right. We have a green. Mark. I have a pearly white for the eyeball, and I need a, it's like a blue for the collar. So, this is all acrylic paint. Do you have orange? Do you have any orange? Orange, yeah. Because there's, there's a little square of orange on the front of the belt. Yes, indeed. Oh, oh, and he's going kayaking tomorrow as well. I am. I am indeed. Is that One sea brush. kayaking, Andy, or a uh, river kayaking? Ah, uh, sea kayaking. All oh, right, wonderful. Nice. Uh not entirely sure where we're going. I would imagine Rich will say something any second. Well, from where oh. you are, point sort of southeast, and you'll go to France. <laughs> yeah, but we're, with, we're going with the boys, so we're going to be going. Don't go round the Isle of Wight. <laughs> Keep going. Right. Bump into Baz and JP. Let's do belt first. 
So, Richard said around the islands. Oh, steady on, mate. <laughs> God, blimey. I did some sailing down that area a lot of years ago. 1978, I think it was. He wants to go around the islands. Does he know how unfit I am? And he's suddenly decided that he may be unwell tomorrow. Yeah, I, no, I'm being unwell thinking about it. We went from, where did we go? We went from Southampton. We went along to Weymouth. Then we sailed back and we went over to the Isle of Wight and it was at the same time the Cow's Week was on. Oh. That always scares yeah. me when they put the uh, the cattle in the sea. It's just like, why would you do that? That's just me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, why would you do that? I mean, what's the point? <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> but then they are. They do live on the isle for a reason, mate. Yeah, they're funny over there. I used yeah, to do a lot are. of deliveries to the Isle of Wight. That's when you could like swim. S- it's like stepping back in time going over there. The Ireland folk. Not the Irish, the Ireland folk. Rob's in Andy may fit an engine onto his kayak. He's gonna he's gonna carve a, a propeller and fit it to his Dremel. He's gonna have the <laughs> operated Dremel. Just very quietly have it sitting beside him. Yeah, remember Thank the batteries on those cordless Dremels won't last very long, Andy. Yeah. It's all right. I've got that the uh, the Bosch thing that they sent me, haven't I? Uh, it's the same battery. All right. So, okay. uh, I, I've, I've got uh, travel uh, travel the life at the moment. Oh well, that's not too bad. Then. At least until I send it back, anyway. Yeah. That, that'll oh, that's get you, that'll that get you about a hundred foot out. Gives you all the item back. Rich says no, just a gentle, just a gentle day paddling with the boys. Yeah, right. Yeah, so Shug said, get solar power for the Dremel, Andy. Good yeah. idea. And of course, it won't turn competitive at all. Between you and Rich. Oh, no. No, no, of course not. No, no. (coughs) Got nothing. Camera's frozen, mate. Only that my beard's longer than his. The camera's frozen. (laughs) Sorry. Oh, not again. That's all right. Start it again. Is it? Yep. Wave your hands in front. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. What time are we looking at? Just gone seven. Hour, yeah, you've been one hour forty-five. Seven oh one. I tell you, the worst time that I had down uh, that area, um, 1976, I was attached to um, an engineer regiment and they had a bridge camp down at Weymouth uh, because obviously they did a lot of bridge building. And we got an SOS from a Remy colonel who had hired one of the um, yachts um, to do a bit of sailing with his family. And he didn't know his ass from his elbow. And um, there was no wind. It was an absolutely glorious summer, 76 was. No wind. He'd run out of bloody battery power. So we had to get a battery out to him. And we had to take, believe it or not, we had to take a bloody assault boat over the top of Chisel Beach. Which is not fun, I've got to say. Oh. No. Chesil Beach is uh, a nightmare. A when when you try, when you're trying to bloody pull a, an assault boat from one side to the other and then do it again, coming back, I think I'll probably give him a slap. 
He did, uh, he, he, well, I've got to say he was very good. He did give us a fair supply of beer for doing that. Yeah, he won it. Right. Now for the green. Get him, Brent. Get him. Get him, Brent. Ooh, that's bright. Somebody yeah, had, had the bloody temerity to walk past the house there. <gasps> How dare they? Yeah, 1976 was a, that was a wild summer, that was. Very, very hot. It was a good year. <coughs> I was seven, and I was living in the States at the time. It was their bicentenary year. Oh, so, sorry, I'll... Lots, of, lots of parties and celebrations. Just leave the door open, Jane. Are you going to watch them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lee, you weren't. I could tell the I could tell everybody the year you were born, if you like. But I won't, because you'll hurt me. <laughs> in fact, in 76, Lee, I think your mum was living with us in America then. Rob, I can neither confirm nor did not deny that. But you're in trouble. Sharp and take a breath there. Yeah, GP was born in eighty two. Me, me, youngsters. Oh, definitely. You patronising old kids. <laughs> <laughs> Was that git or gits?
82 was a special year. 82 was the year I met Jane. Oh, you're romantic. Not a good year. That was the year that my younger, my older sister was born. <clears throat> they should have just waited to 85. John C's just joined the group. Hello, John. Hey, John. Blame Canada's in the house. Yeah, camera's frozen, Andy. Yeah, when I met Jane, I was attached to the military police. I was a mechanic for the military police at that time. I met her on Friday night at a party. I took her to the um, the military police summer ball on the Saturday night, and I moved into her flat on the Sunday. <laughs> Then, oh, hello. Oh, Not hello. A whirlwind, then. Hello. No. Why does it always go to me? Because you were first in, Mark. Yeah. And he's back. All right. It's all right. Robert Dolman saying 82 was the year that he got married. Uh, 83. We got married, Robert. Met in 82 and got married in 83. <laughs> 1969, I was born. Child of the 60s. Mine was a little bit before that. Or I was born a little bit before that, Mark. I quite like the fact that I, I managed to be born just before we put a man on the moon. Just a couple of months before. Rob's, Rob saying he was born in 1974. Uh, that was the year I joined the army, Rob. Yeah, I was born in the April, and it was June, wasn't it, when they went to the moon? I think it was June. It was either June or July, one of the two. So, JP's other half was born in 1990. Well, okay. I was born in 54, that's when I was born. Not 1854, 1954. <laughs> I'm glad you specified then. <laughs> Wayne, had you heard of the SAS before the embassy siege? Um, I did a bit, not a bit of time with the SAS. Um, the SAS were um, obviously very big for a long time before the embassy siege, and I worked with uh, quite a few of them when I was over in Oman in 1977. Proper mental, every single one of them, but in a good way. Cracking bunch of people. Totally bonkers, but really good. Yeah, um, I remember when we were, we were traveling from Salala, uh, which is sort of one of the capital cities in Oman. Because Oman is split into um, two different states, if you like. 
um, in the southern one um, state is the capital is Salala, and that was the um, the Sultan's sort of summer residence, if you like. That's where we were stationed, and we used to travel sort of down country towards the uh, Yemen border. I was with the engineers at that time, <coughs> and we used to travel down towards the Yemen border, and we were building, oh, sorry, the engineers were building sort of concrete bases for buildings and uh, roads and things like this. And it used to be a chopper ride to get down there. Um, and I mean, all of a sudden, everybody be on the chopper ready to go. And all of a sudden, this guy come run across the tarmac with basically a rifle, a belt full of water bottles and ammo pouches, and leap on the, on the helicopter and turn around to everybody and go, shh. <laughs> 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 and then once once we were up and uh, traveling he'd sort of get on the the headset and speak to the pilot and say can you just make a quick detour and drop me off over there somewhere <laughs> and he'd get he'd get dropped off in the middle of nowhere absolutely nothing there at all and just say here's guys and off he went yeah he wasn't there you didn't see a thing no he wasn't there didn't see a thing Yeah, don't ask an SES guy a direct question. Like, what size shoe do you take? Because he'd probably come back with an answer. Shoes? What are they? Yeah. That looks wicked. That really does look wicked, Andy. Yeah, it's getting there. Second coat will be better than the first. Um, so dark patches showing through. Um, that's all right. That's all right. No, Jamie doesn't mean that. He's asking, does that mean you can kill me with one deadly blow? It'll probably be a blow of a half inch going out. Yeah. Never mess with a car, though. Might turn you into sculpture. <coughs> No, Robbie, I'll just strap you to the VB36 and give you a spin. Whoops. You wouldn't ask me to get people off an aeroplane if they were being held hostage. <laughs> um... What we need to do is call Bruce Willis. Yeah, he's good at stuff like that. Yeah, it seems to be his thing. It's every Christmas ring. Mental. Never want to go to his house for Christmas. Oh, yes, Ian, Ian in the shed is. Because he's seen the VP, he's seen the famous VB up close and personal. Is it as big as it looks like on the screen? But it's very strange, you know, Mark. It's actually got quite a small footprint. Really? Yeah, it, 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 uh, the footprint of the VB36 is only about two foot by two foot. Oh, wow. You've got to have some room behind for the... Um, the uh, the tool rest bar obviously and some room in front for that as well 
So as soon as I've got the the, the ball turned and laid rather than the one with the bed, um, even I have got a, a bar that goes through for doing between centre work, but I can only do two foot between centres. But the actual lathe itself, where it stands, it's only a two foot by two foot footprint. Right. Is it a belt drive or a direct drive? Oh, it's belt drive. Belt drive, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rob, I haven't heard. He's just asking if um, my area, Dumfries and Galloway, is going into lockdown. Um, he's seen the, or his wife has said the COVID cases went up. I haven't heard. Uh, I haven't seen any local news today. There was certainly nothing on the local news last night, and I don't think uh, Jimmy Cranky said anything yesterday lunchtime any, uh, as well. She'll be looking for a clicky pen. She, she will. She'll be looking for a clicky pen. <laughs> I've, I've actually started following that lass's page, Jane Godley. She's absolutely brilliant. That was one of the funniest clips I've seen. One of the funnier ones, um, and she still did it in a Scottish accent, was uh, Trump talking to a, a journalist where Trump is trying to defend the um, the numbers of COVID cases in America. But she does it's the the way Jane um, Cudley does it. They are not talking about COVID cases. They're talking about something totally different. It is right. hilarious. Uh, I'll see what I can find out over the weekend, Rob, and I will. Um, I'll see if I can let you know or let people know what's happening around this area when I do me live on Monday. And the question you did ask us previously about um, things to do, you know, for kids. I did notice both yesterday and today there's a, a local play thing uh, not far away from me. It's only about a couple of miles away from me. That's just started opening up again. Uh, this is an outdoor and I think indoor play area and there's uh, animals there to go around and see as well for kids. Don't ask me the cost. I've got no idea. I'll see if I can actually, I'll see if they've got a website. I've just I'll looked. Let you know about it. I've just, just looked on Google. And the latest Dumfries and or the, the most recent Dumfries and Galloway lockdown news was from the 7th of July. So it doesn't seem like anything new has happened. So it's everything's still open as from then. So there's nothing recent. No. Somebody else had said that the other day and I couldn't find anything. Prices and opening. Right, Rob. It's saying um, for kids three to sixteen years, it's uh, eight pound. I don't know if it's um, if you've got if it's timed for how long you can actually stay there. But that's a place called. Um, Dalscone Farm, that's D-A-L-S-C-O-N-E Farm. There's always, there's another place that's not too far away from me, which is uh, maybe Park Farm. There's a similar type of thing.
she was just coming in, in with a, another end line from, from Jimmy Cranky. <laughs> Frank, get the door. I'm dying for some daddy's clothes. <laughs> At least he didn't do the pointy shoe joke. <laughs> yeah, Shooks and Jane Goodley is awesome. She is just brilliant. Wayne says you don't need a lockdown. They still use Adrian's wall. <laughs> I think it was actually Hadrian, but it's close. That looks awesome, Andy. Uh, the black's gone all scummy. Give it a shake. I've got another one, I'm sure. Black. Camera's cool. Oh, no, it's back. Back. That's fine. Yeah, Adrian was his uh, less well known brother. They'd say it's Hadrian's wall, but I guarantee he never laid a brick towards it. Yeah, probably not. He was just a contractor. What they built it with sardines. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, I'm here all week. Uh, to, if I remember rightly, it's something to do with horses. It's a time team thing. I used to love that program. It's like, hi, we're from Time Team. We're just going to dig up your back garden. Hope you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll only be a 12 metre by 16 feet deep um, trench, and we will be putting a house in it for you. Is that okay? You know, I, yeah. I used to like it when they say, we're just going to dig a test trench. It's only going to be two foot wide and four yeah. foot deep. Two diggers later, it's 13 acres of hole in the back garden. Oh look, we found a Roman villa. Hadrian's wall isn't the, the most northern of the walls either. 
Is it not? No. There you go. There is also the Antonine Wall, which goes across the Sentinel Belt in Scotland. And See, I've always had this. Go on. And my oh. auntie's garden wall. Yeah, and his auntie's garden wall. Yeah. That's pretty old. That's, that's in Cumbria, though, isn't it? Yeah. I was joking. See, I've got this theory about Stonehenge. I reckon Stonehenge was built by an old chieftain who had nothing better to do but had the foresight to think this will really confuse people for <laughs> centuries. Oh, now you're still going. Yeah, oh. Did anybody see that thing that was put on Facebook today with all the hinges set up? Yeah. Uh, and it got called Stonehenge. Stonehenge. It was brilliant. <laughs> Huey. See Huey's comments. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Plus seven, Andy. Yep, just literally got these two, three little lines on here, and then I'm calling it done. for the live anyway. Lee seen it's looking great, Andy. Thank you very much. Right, that's it. So Bob Laps is saying the Antonine Way is 30 minutes away from him. He's never seen it. It might just be an earth mound. I've never seen it either, tell you the truth, Bob. Haggis is lovely, John C. But if you, if you are going out haggis hunting, depending on if you want to catch a male or a female, it really on depend, depends on which leg is longer than the other. Yeah, I was never very good at haggis hunting when I went to Scotland. They're sneaky little buggers. Yeah, well, you see, male haggises, I think, have the right leg longer than the other, and they run anti-clockwise around the hill. And female haggises have the left leg longer <laughs> than the other, and they run clockwise around the hill. <laughs> right. Right, they're so they can meet up in the middle. 
Bass says, Battered Hag is supper winner. That's wicked, mate. Yeah, I, I would totally going. agree with that. Totally agree with that, Barry. Yep. I'll give him another coat of green and then give him a lacquer um, and then I'll post the pictures. Great. There we go. That's awesome. On Kang. Done. Loads of loads of positive comments, mate. Lots of compliments. Cool, nice one. Thank you ever so much, guys. Um next week uh, well no, hold on. Let's whoa, whoa, whoa. Back a bit, Andy. Tomorrow <clears throat> we have at lunchtime we have SK Steve. Yep. Yep. Is that right? Yep. yep. SK Steve, lunchtime, I believe one o'clock. Um, then we've got Makers International Podcast at... Uh, yeah. uh, Mike, Mike Wilson is live. Mike Wilson is live tomorrow evening. Yeah, so you've got Mike, Mike Waltz. doing it live. Probably yeah. about seven, I would guess. Yes. Um, then afterwards, I'm pretty sure JP will have a... Premier. Premier. Yeah, after the um, podcast, yeah. And then you've probably got Caitlin after that. And yeah, then, usually about quarter past 11. Yeah, and Monday is your live lunchtime. Yep, the um, usual time. Steve, Steve in the evening. Uh, Twiddles in the evening. Then you have... Tuesday lunchtime is a free space. So if somebody like Mark, for example, wanted to have Tuesday on a permanent basis, Tuesday's free. Just saying. I might do a live Tuesday to finish the sphere off. Because I won't be uh, doing a live next Saturday. I can only say, I can say that with confidence because the Tuesday was myself. So... Um, Thank you very the much. Fact that nobody else has taken it on yet, so crack on there, sunshine. Uh, Tuesday evening is uh, Rich the Beard. Um, it's live Wednesday uh, lunchtime. Nick. Wednesday evening. Wayne. Me again. And uh, then Thursday. Oh. Thursday lunchtime is SK. No, SK. SK does a lunchtime. If he can. Unless he's working, yeah. And then Scott, Thursday night. Rich Invasion, then Scott. And then Stace on Friday. And Wayne. Yeah, me Friday lunchtime. Yeah. And I am, even though I'm going to be doing next Um, Saturday, I... I'll still be doing the the Friday lunchtime as well. Cool. And then next next Saturday uh, is the Makers Festival. Yes, Starts at ten a.m. Makers Festival, ten o'clock. For sixteen um, hours. Um, I'm on my <laughs> usual spot at five, so um, don't forget everybody else in between now and next Saturday, 5 o'clock. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, right. Take it easy, folks. Have a good evening. Have a good weekend. Um, I will speak to most of you, I'm sure, at some point over the next week or so. Take it easy. Bless you all. Stay safe. And Thank you, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, gentlemen. It's quite Bye. all right.